Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation. And in today's video, we're gonna be installing an amplifier and subwoofer in this 2017 Hyundai Sonata. Now in this video, we're gonna show you how to install this amp and sub to the factory audio system. One quick thing to note, this Sonata does not have the upgraded Bose or amplified sound system, so we don't have to integrate with that whatsoever. If you did, we'll make some quick comments here along the way in case you have that trim level on how to install the amplifier to the factory system. First thing we need to do, let's head to the bench and show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. All right, so here we are at the bench. Now, the parts that we're gonna need, first and foremost, is the amplifier that's gonna run this entire system. Um, the customer has brought us this Pioneer Special Edition GMD X871. This is similar to the GMD 8701. Now to run this here, um, we're going with this new concept CCA kit. It's a four gauge amplifier wiring kit. In this kit itself, it comes with power wire, ground wire, RCAs, uh, fuse and fuse holder, accessory, speaker wire, remote turn on, everything that you need for your install. Now, because this is the factory audio system, we need some sort of high level to low level or input on the amplifier to accommodate the factory signal. You'll notice with these RCAs on the factory radio, there's no audio output for an amplifier like this. Now, our amplifier, fortunately, can take high level input through the RCA inputs and Pioneer supplies this harness to make that happen. If your amplifier does not have high level inputs or speaker level inputs, if you will, then you can pick up a line out converter, which we can link down in the description. Now for the subs that we're going with, the customer wants us to install our two 12 inch uh, kicker comp subs. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is grab our wiring here, our power wire. We're gonna go up underneath the hood, show you where this needs to connect. We'll build a fuse holder mount for a fuse and fuse holder and start running this from the battery area through the firewall to the trunk location. All right, so underneath the hood, we have our battery here on the driver's side. This is the positive terminal here. And generally the stud that we want to go to is this guy. This secondary stud is actually behind its own fuse for the factory system. We don't want to add an additional load to that fuse there. So we're going to put our power wire on this big terminal here. Um, we'll have to do some modifications to this so it can accommodate that wiring. But through there, we'll build an inline fuse as close to that battery post as possible. And then we'll run our power wire through a grommet on the firewall. All right, here we are underneath the steering column. And as you can see, there's our main harness that goes to the firewall. And we have this metal hanger. And on the right, there's a little hole in there where we can run our hanger through and it just pops through the other side. And we have this fully moving into the engine bay out completely of the way of the main wiring harness. We don't want to impact that in any way. So we're going to go top side to show you where that comes out. And that's where it comes out. Our little wiring there in the center frame. And essentially it comes out here. And what we've done is we've taped our wire to that hanger really, really well. And already got some, a lot of soap and water and sprayed it on the end and way down there on the ground on it. What we're gonna do is from the top side here, we're gonna go inside and pull this wire on through that grommet. As long as it's lubed up nice and slippery, it should pass on through that rubber grommet pretty well. All right, so with that wire pulled through, we've been working here. That wire comes on through. We just left enough slack to go into our fuse holder and then to the positive post of the terminal. How we did our fuse holder is we snagged that bolt there. With a long piece of ABS plastic, we just molded it and made a nice little fuse mount so that isn't just flopping around. It does move a little bit, but you can move it around just in case you have to do any maintenance to the battery. We went through this through a wire ferrule, four gauge ferrule, through a 100 amp fuse all the way up to our power post. Now we went underneath that spot there. This is your clamp for the battery post. You could put it there, but it could compromise the integrity of um, how well it clamps around the battery post. So we put it there on that stud and uh, we actually put it under a couple of, of those brackets there and it's nice and flush using a copper ring terminal. So that's all done. 
Of course, our negative is off the battery. That's why we can have this hooked up there, but we modified this cover just a hair and it still clips into place. So we're done up underneath the hood at this point through the firewall on the other side. We need to continue running our wiring to the trunk. Okay, so with that side off, we fed our wire down up underneath the carpet here. We're zip tying it to existing loom. We're gonna continue going this way to the trunk. We just tucked it up underneath the B pillar here without having to need to take it off. We continue along, we pop this off kind of like the front. We have that here. It's gonna go up along the factory loom and out here. And the customer wants it on the back seat. Uh, it doesn't fit great underneath the seats and so, this is the location they have opted to go with. Um, we're trying to avoid mounting it to the box itself where it was previously. And so we're gonna get it mounted here. Now, we got our length all ready to go for our power. We just need to cut it. And then for our ground here, the secondary cable, a couple of places where you can do that. We pulled off this side cover here. There happens to be a factory ground right there if you wanted to go there. There are miscellaneous bolts down here where we're gonna go. We go inside, we flip this on up. That guy there is a threaded screw that there is nothing in there. So what we're gonna do is with a wire brush, we're gonna clean that up and find a, um, a bolt that fits that location. And that's where we're gonna put our ground. Now our wire brush is this guy here, just on the end of the drill, makes for a nice clean ground. Then we got our bolt with a washer and our ground ready to go. So let's get that installed. All right, so we got our amplifier all mounted. It's nice and sturdy on the back seat here. We got our wire ferrules done and ends cut nice and clean. We just need to shrink down the tubes around our heat shrink. There is our ground. So we get a good shot. Ground's all done. Really, really clean ground with a bolt in washer on there. So we're gonna shrink those down. We're gonna get those mounted up into our terminals here. And then we'll need to run our speaker wire to our box here that's already in the trunk. And uh, lastly, we're gonna do our high level input RCAs. So as a remote turn on wire and get those run and installed as well. Okay, so we got the amplifier RL hooked up. We got the positive and negative hooked up to the terminals of the amplifier and our speaker wire output going to the inputs of our box. Uh, we use wire ferrules on everything. It's all good to go there. Now at this point of time, we need to tap um, signal for the amplifier. And what we're gonna do is just tap into the rear speaker here. Since this is a mono, we don't really need stereo. We could also tap from the other pillar, the other B pillar for the other rear speaker, but really don't need to, considering that you'll probably keep the balance and fader in the center of the vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and tap into this and we'll show you where we're gonna locate those wires for that speaker to run our line out converter or high level inputs to our amplifier. All right, so we're here at the bench. Now these are the high level input adapter that came with the amplifier. Um, again, if you don't have one or your amplifier is not compatible with high level inputs, you can certainly use a line out converter and we can link those in the description for you today. Since we're just gonna do a, a mono input here, even though this is a left and right, it's a mono amplifier. So what we've done here is combine both of the black wires in our harness to our black wire and the red and the white or the right side to our power positive or blue side. And uh, we soldered onto that, that's all done. Now at this point, what we're gonna do is move our heat shrink up and over those connections and we'll shri shrink them now with the heat gun We'll wrap this um, harness here in Tessa tape, and then we'll run this in the vehicle to the location where we're gonna tap in for that signal. So we got the uh, RCAs to the input of the amplifier, and that speaker wire goes down, goes along, along this kick panel, and we're gonna show you where we've made our connections here. If you happen to have a DC current in your factory speakers, 
your amplifier may be able to pick that up and automatically sense that and turn the amplifier on for you without the use of a remote turn on wire. We happen to have that in this 2017 Hyundai Sonata and our amplifier is equipped with that sensing where once it senses there is an input on the RCAs, it'll actually automatically turn on the amplifier for us without even hooking up a remote turn on wire. If your amplifier does not have that feature, we'll show you what fuse you can tap into and the parts you need to safely tap into that um, to uh, run a remote turn on wire for that amp. Other than that, we got everything zip tied nice and clean here. We even anchored down our RCA so they won't get snagged or anything or fall out. And the way we've wired it, it actually folds really nicely without any wiring or mess or anything getting pinched or ripped out of the amp. It's perfect the way it sits. So um, let's show you how we finished our we signal ran that wire. signal wire all the way up here. Now, when we pull this apart, it appears it already had a system in it. Um, previous installer went ahead and cut and spliced in this, but they left a little pigtail off from the last system that was removed, I'm, I'm assuming before the customer purchased this vehicle. Um, so what we did is we soldered into that. This bundle of wire here, they pulled off the electrical tape and there's a twisted pair, kind of right next to this white brown, there's a twisted pair that's a white black. Twisted pair is in the wires are twisted together and they're only the ones that are twisted together. Your positive is gonna be the white wire and your negative is gonna be the black wire. Um, I will also post here in the video the positive and negative for the other speaker as well as the front doors just in case you need that as well. Um, but that's where we tapped into speaker wire. Essentially this speaker wire goes into the B pillar, into the door itself. Uh, we'll get this all zip tied and cleaned up here, get my zip tie ready and uh, put this panel now, back. If your amplifier happens to be the one that it does not have a DC offset setting or capability to turn on for you if you're tapping into the factory system, here is your fuse box just left of the steering column. In this fuse box, there's quite a few fuses. The one I recommend is this 20 amp fuse to go to. It's only on switched power. Now this guy is only gonna turn on when the key is on, it's perfect. You're probably wondering, how do you tap into that safely? Well, let's show you on the bench the part that you would need uh, to safely tap into that fuse. Now here at the bench, the part that we're talking about is called an add a circuit. Add a circuits are really cool because essentially you pull out the fuse or circuit that you're tapping into and you put this in its place and the fuse you removed from factory, you put it in the first slot here. Once you put that in the first slot, that retains that original circuit. So whatever accessory that was being ran on that circuit is not impacted by our tap here. And then the second set is where you'll put your second fuse and that will fuse the line to your accessory, like in our case, the remote turn on wire. And you can just crimp on your wire on that end, run that to your remote turn on wire. So we'll link the right size of this add circuit down in the description, just in case you need uh, to pick one up yourself. All right, so with the amplifier all hooked up, we went ahead and put our negative back on the battery and tightened everything down. Everything looks nice and clean up underneath the hood. All right, so we got everything all back together here. Amplifier's all in, wiring's all cleaned up. Got everything tuned with an SMD DD1. So our gains are set perfectly to the factory radio. So at this point of time, let's hear it bump. <laughs> All right, that's about it for this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, post a comment below. Uh, we'll link all the parts that we used in the description in the event you want to pick them up for yourselves. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. And we will see you in the next video.